Hi, my name is Angela Wolf, and I'm a PharmD candidate from California North State University. And I'll be presenting on the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor paroxetine, which also goes by the brand name Paxil. So Paxil comes in various tablet strengths, starting at 10 milligrams and going all the way up to 40 milligram tablets. It also comes in a liquid form um, at a strength of 10 milligrams per 5 ml solution. So I'll be going over some patient counseling points, starting with what the drug is used for, all the way down to what to do if you miss a dose. So Paxil is a medication that's used for various disease states, um, including depression, OCD, um, anxiety, panic attacks, and PTSD, some mood problems caused by periods, um, as well as hot flashes that are caused by menopause. It can be given to you for various other reasons, and that's something you can discuss with your doctor. So before taking this medication, you should let your doctor know if you have narrow angle glaucoma, if you're taking linazolid, methylene blue, pimazide, or thyroidazine, if you take any other drugs for depression or Parkinson's disease in the last 14 days, or if you're pregnant or may be pregnant. So some things you should know while taking this medication is that you shouldn't suddenly stop taking this medication without talking to your doctor first. You wanna make sure to avoid drinking alcoholic beverages while taking this medication. And you wanna to talk to your doctor before using marijuana or other forms of cannabis. When you start taking this medication for the first time, it can take several weeks to see the full effects of the medication. And some people that take this medication can also have a higher chance of experiencing eye problems. This medication should not be used if you're pregnant and you should let your doctor know if you are currently breastfeeding. So some side effects of Paxil that you would need to talk to your doctor about right away include depression, nervousness, restlessness, panic attacks, or any changes in mood, as well as thoughts or actions of suicide, any signs of bleeding, extreme dizziness or passing out, bone pain, seizures, significant weight loss, or painful erection, or an erection that lasts longer than four hours. Some other side effects of this medication are dizziness or sleepiness, feeling nervous, experiencing a headache, constipation, diarrhea, stomach upset, dry mouth, trouble sleeping, or shakiness. You can store Paxil at room temperature in a dry place. Just make sure to keep it in a safe place out of reach of children or pets. The capsule form, you just want to make sure to protect from light. Now, this medication is best taken with or without food. The liquid form, you just want to make sure to shake well before you use it and measure the dose carefully using a measuring device. Sometimes it comes with the medication. Also, you want to make sure to take the liquid form in the morning. For the tablet products, you want to make sure not to chew, break, or crush the medication and swallow it whole. And you can also take this one in the morning. The capsule form, you want to make sure to take at bedtime. So Paxil is used to treat various conditions, um, and treatment is using the immediate release or extended release forms of Paxil. It can be used to treat generalized anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder, OCD, panic disorder, PTSD, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, social anxiety disorder, and vasomotor symptoms of menopause. 
So Paxil is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, and it inhibits serotonin reuptake from the brain synapse, stimulated by serotonin activity in the brain. Some drug-drug interactions of Paxil include CYP2D6 inhibitors, such as aripiprazole, atomoxetine, brexpiprazole, doxorubicin, metoclopramide, and risperidone. Also, when taken with certain medications, it can also increase the risk for serotonin syndrome. So this includes dextromethorphan, linazolid, and selegiline. It can also increase the antiplatelet effects in the body when taken with enoxaparin or heparin. So in terms of dosing and administration, um, for generalized anxiety disorder, Paxil is dosed in their immediate release form, starting at 10 milligrams once daily by mouth. You can go ahead and increase the dose based on the patient's response, but in increments of 10 milligrams per day, no greater than one week. And you can titrate up to 50 milligrams per day. For major depressive disorder, using the immediate release form of Paxil, we can start with 20 milligrams once daily and increase the dose in increments of 10 to 20 every one or more weeks at a max dose of 50 milligrams per day. For the extended release form, we can start at 25 milligrams once daily and increase the dose in increments of 12.5 milligrams per day every one week or more at a max dose of 62.5 milligrams per day. In the treatment of OCD, we can use the immediately re release form of Paxil. Starting with 20 milligrams once daily by mouth, we can increase the dose in increments of 10 every one or more weeks up to the recommended dose, which is between 40 and 60 milligrams per day. When used in PTSD, we use the immediately release form, and we can start at 20 milligrams once daily by mouth. And again, we can increase in increments of 10 to 20 milligrams per day every one week or more, up to a max dose of 16 milligrams per day. Some serious side effects of Paxil include bleeding risk, fragility fractures, hyponatremia, some effects to um, the eye, including acute angle closure glaucoma, serotonin syndrome, sexual dysfunction, and suicidal thinking and behavior. And this specifically is seen in patients between the ages of 18 to 24 years old. Some other adverse effects include diaphoresis, decreased libido, constipation, decreased appetite, diarrhea, dyspepsia, nausea, and xerostomia, ejaculatory disorder, dizziness, drowsiness, headache, or insomnia, as well as tremor. So Paxil does carry a boxed warning for suicidal thoughts and behaviors. Some con other concerns related to adverse effects are its colon anticholinergic effects, as well as its potential for CNS depression. So we want to make sure in this instance, if it's the first time the patient's taking the medication, um, to kind of see how they feel while they're on it and make sure that they're capable of operating a vehicle or any equipment. Some disease-related concerns include cardiovascular disease and seizure disorder. So we want to make sure to use this in caution with patients who have a previous seizure disorder. Some monitoring parameters to consider with Paxil are liver and renal function tests, specifically at baseline, we can look at sodium levels in patients who are at risk. A CBC, we can also closely monitor for things like changes in mood, um, depression, or any clinical worsening. 
You can also look for signs or symptoms of serotonin syndrome, autonomic instability, neuromuscular changes, and seizures. This concludes my presentation on Paxil, and here are my references.